In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to Google Classroom. Now, I've been using Google Classroom to help me stay organized and less frazzled and make lesson notes and resources accessible to my students. Now, I know it's called Google Classroom, but I actually use Google Classroom in the context of one-on-one -on -one personalized lessons. So this is where it is especially valuable if you are a private lesson, teacher, maybe you're a tutor, or even a homeschool parent, then this video is for you. So first of all, it is especially helpful if you have a Gmail account, and I have actually a, work, a Google Workspace account. I have the Pro account, and it is called uh, Google Workspace Business Plus is my current plan. And for that, we do pay a monthly fee. Now, the great news is you can actually access Google Classroom for free. The reason we have a paid subscription is because we have multiple teachers in our music school. We also wanted to have a join meeting link in each individualized classroom. And it was very affordable compared to the programs we were using. So let's take a look at what you need to get Google Classrooms working on your behalf. Now, the reason why I use it is because I, as a teacher, have always used handwritten lesson notes and a book that I send off with the student and I think, I hope they'll dig into it, I hope the parents will find my notes, and then I send it out into the world. But one thing I've noticed when working with lots of students and as my brain capacity gets fuller with my own uh, children's activities and homeschooling, I find it so helpful that use an accessible resource like Google Classroom means the students have access to their notes. I can add a parent or caregiver to their notes that will get an email reminder. And I also have access to their notes through the week. So it helps me feel especially organized where just before lessons or as we meet, I have the notes in front of me and I can also give a quick glance at the beginning of my day or before the weekend and make sure that everyone has what they need for a successful week of music lessons. For me, that's huge peace of mind and I don't keep wondering, oh, have I missed anything that I promised I would find for that student? So. I have loved using this as a platform. So first of all, this is what Google Classroom logo looks like. You'll find it as an option when you sign into your Gmail. There's those nine little dots that you can click on and find things like your Google Drive folder. And there you will find Google Classroom. You can also download it as an app, which is very handy because you can give it a quick glance from your iPad or a phone if you're on the move. So let's get started and we'll actually take a little browse at what it would be like to have this for private students and how it can help you feel more calm, more organized and have students take responsibility for their lesson notes. So we'll take a little look at some classrooms I have set up and I've put some names in just as filler spots. So this is a sample of my classroom here and I have more as I scroll down. So one of the main things with this is when I have a classroom, I'll give you a quick scan. So I have a lot of classrooms set up. Each student has their own classroom. So I set it up individually because my students all are working at different levels and with different resources. So then I can go into a classroom. Now we can use it for group classes as well. So our online music theory club or a practice club, this is a perfect opportunity for a group class. So if you are wanting to set one up for yourself, you'll see that there's a little plus or addition sign and that says create or join a class. And that's all you would do to click and start creating a class of your own. So let's do it. It says join a class. This is what you would do if you were logged in and you needed to join someone else's class. But if you're hosting as a teacher, you would click create a class. Now, this is where I <laughs> had in something like, you know, Amy's Piano Hub 
or corner or club. You can choose your name. And I add in Motif Music Studios just because I think it sounds really professional. My subject, I you can add anything you like. I add piano, or if someone's doing composition or music theory, I would add that. Now, the room's kind of funny because I'm always here in my teaching closet, and they're joining from their living room, but I just say online piano lessons, and that is our room. And you could click Create, and look what happens. Amy's Piano Hub has been created. So first of all, I love to give each student their own banner, and I kind of click it based on the interests that they have. So if I know that I have a student that has just traveled the world, I would click that. I have others that are really into sports or knitting or things like that, and I'll click something that suits them. You can also upload a customized banner. So if you click customize and click select a photo, you can make, create a properly sized photo on Canva and upload that uh, to be personalized. So from there, I keep it really simple. So this is kind of, it's called your stream. This is the home page of your teaching. The first thing I do is I click on the meet button and I say generate link. Now for my classes, I just push save and that automatically creates a join meeting button that they can, I join when I go to teach them and they press join when they're ready to meet with me. And it's always their same classroom. So it generates a unique link for them. And that is super special that it's always the same. I don't have to send families a join meeting link. So this is great if you have uh, either you're also teaching online or if you just want it set up in advance. So if a student is a bit under the weather or if they're traveling or if the weather is poor and they want to join online instead of in person, you can have this ready in advance so people know where to go. The next thing you'll see is there is a class code. You can copy the class invite link when you set it up. And I have a special draft email that I send families that includes their personalized class link and their copy class code. I have it set so it's quite easy for them to get into it because it's not as much of a security risk or trouble because it is set up and personalized to them. Now the next thing is I don't have graded materials. If I was doing more exams or theory that required a grade, then I would set up some of the grades, but I don't set that up here. I keep it really simple. Also, you can have yourself as a teacher. If you have a co-teacher or if perhaps you hired a substitute teacher, you can actually add them right into here so that they can take a peek. I also use this classroom for homeschooling and so my own children's teachers are added to their stream so they can see what we're up to. From there, we would invite the student and um, I'll blur that out after. Um, we'd invite the student and anyone who's already in your contact list will show up and if they're not in your contact list, you would make sure to have the correct email and add it to there. Once in a while, you can find that there's an email style that doesn't work as smoothly. Uh, and so Gmail is obviously the easiest one to use, but there are some workarounds in the settings. So the class settings, you can go down and say things like stream and classwork. Students can post and comment or students can only comment or only teachers can post and comment. So in mind when it's one-on-one -on -one and I trust the student, it's just me seeing the work, then I say students can post and comment because they can share their work with me and vice versa. If I was in a class setting and the class was new and I didn't know if there was any mischief makers in there, then I would restrict the comments at first until there was some trust established and some class rules and I would be more cautious with that. Um, and then classwork on the stream, you can set up your style that you like. All of this can really work itself out later, so I wouldn't stress too much about this. The other thing I really liked right away, I do put the manage meet link visible to students. You can have it turned off if there was times you didn't want anyone joining your meetings and then you would have the choice to do that. 
And then I turn off the grading because they don't need to worry about that in private piano lessons. It's all relational and we're working on progress together. And so then you can add those different settings. So we'll save that. And then something that I really like about the student setting that I haven't had in other programs is not only can I invite the student email if they're a teenager or if they have their own email, which is becoming increasingly common, but I also invite a caregiver in there for transparency's sake. And if students are in shared homes between parents, I can also add both parents as long as permission is granted for that and there's no privacy issues. So I double check with caregivers and if so, there's access to the notes in both homes or with whoever wants to be have accessibility to the classroom. Now the classwork area is where you might assign an assignment, a quiz, a question. So you could have a question of the week here if you're a private teacher. I actually might post some questions about their favorite practice tip for other students. You can also post material and some different ideas that you might have like a practice challenge. And then you can also post, um, reuse a post if you've already had one. You can say, oh okay, I could grab a post that I've already created and use it again. So that really helps with that efficiency. Now, what I use most is this thing called the stream. <laughs> That's kind of like on Facebook, your home page, where you get all the news, and that's where your student will likely log in and see first. So it says, this is where you can talk to your class. Use the stream to share announcements, post assignments, and respond to, to student questions. So how I use the stream is while I'm teaching, I am writing notes about what they might wanna do, practice tips for the upcoming week, and you can add your resources right to this. So if you are adding in your notes in here, you have some simple edits. I like to bold face things that need to stand out. You can also go to a drive folder and add something directly into here. You can link a specific YouTube video you want them to watch. And I love that it doesn't pull them out into YouTube to watch the video. They can watch it right in their classroom without advertising, so that's helpful. And the other thing you can do is you can upload a file. One caution I give is I try really, really hard to make sure that the resources I add in as drive files, that I have full permission to share. So they're resources of my own or music that I've created or studio licensed resources that I am able to share freely. Or you could also upload something like a sample page if you want them to purchase a resource from a composer and they have a sample cover page, then you could upload that and say, hey, this is what we're working towards and add in the purchase details. So that's something I use often for the link is that you can add a web link, like copy it, paste it, and add in a link to something that you'd like them to go purchase of their own. So that's really helpful as well. Now here it says four, and right now I've selected Amy's Piano Hub, but I can have things go to more than one person. So that's also really helpful. This now says it'll go to four classes, and then that would go to all four at once. So sometimes if I'm having an event, then I also would use this as a little time to say, hey, we have a Lego and creativity class, music sharing this weekend, make sure to remember and I can put in a photo or a little poster about it and it'll show up in their class as a quick reminder and knowing that the parents also get the copy of what I put in here so it's right in front of your families right away. So I love that option. So I can't wait to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you're using Google resources already. If so, I'd love to hear what you're using. Do you use Google Slides? Do you use uh, the Drive folders or Excel sheets? Or do you also use Google Classroom? If so, I'd love to hear from you. So that gives you some hopefully a starting point with Google Classroom. I know it's big to think about using something new and fresh, but I hope it'll get you excited about something that you can use 
with your uh, students. So please let me know if you're using Google already. If you are curious about using Google Workspace, um, like I mentioned, I use Business Plus and I do have an affiliate link in the video description if that's helpful to you and you want to explore more about what the Google Classroom can do for you. Thanks for listening. Let me know if you have questions and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. See you next time.